So in this video, we're going to talk about matter cycles or how matter moves around the biosphere. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure you're clear about how matter can actually move from source to source. And if matter transforms from one form to another, there are maybe pathways that can take it back to where it originally came from. So matter can be recycled and is cycled constantly around the biosphere, um, perhaps leaving living things, but then having a way to come back into them. Um, and that's in sharp contrast with the energy flow video that I made. Um, energy is not stuff. Um, and so maybe I could just kind of define matter as stuff, uh, solid stuff, liquid stuff, air stuff. Uh, and so energy flows and cannot be cycled. And I talked about that in a different video. And here I'm really trying to emphasize uh, the stuff uh, within living things and, and how it might move um, out of us and back into us. And so maybe we ought to think about what the important stuff that makes us up again as a review. So if we think about the four basic types of macromolecules that make us up, we could think about maybe six broad types of atoms that would be important for us to follow. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then sulfur and phosphorus. There are, of course, other trace elements that we have, especially in coenzymes that help form certain uh, of our proteins. Uh, but we could really focus on these six. I'm not going to necessarily go through all of the different matter cycles, like the sulfur and the phosphorus cycle, or even the water cycle, which I kind of assume you know at this point. So I figure I would just touch on the nitrogen cycle very briefly, and then really focus our attention mostly on how carbon moves and cycles around the biosphere. So let's um, look at the nitrogen cycle. Here's kind of a diagram, way too complicated for my purposes in our course. Um, but the one thing I'd really like to emphasize is how indebted we are to certain species of nitrogen fixing bacteria seen here in the diagram. Um, so again, this isn't all bacteria who can do this. This is certain species who are capable of taking um, gaseous nitrogen in the air and fix it into the soil by converting it into a different form, something like ammonium or or eventually nitrite or nitrate. Um, all of those are capable of dissolving in water so that they're kind of held in the soil. And the reason that's so important for other living things is that's how plants and autotrophs uh, want to get their nitrogen. So you can see here the diagram calls that assimilation. They want to take those sources of nitrogen in through their roots so that they're capable of taking them and uh, perhaps with biosynthetic pathways inside uh, make amino acids or nucleotides that eventually make up the, the molecules in their cells. And so that's going to be important for us consumers as well, because if we're going to get our nitrogen, we want to be able to either eat plants or the eaters of plants um, to get our own nitrogen. So sort of indirectly, we're all dependent on nitrogen fixing bacteria for putting nitrogen in a place where the rest of us can access it. Um, that's something that, that plants cannot do. Um, and we'll see a kind of a contrast with that and how they're able to grab carbon dioxide out of the air in the carbon cycle here in just a minute. So that's really the only aspect of the nitrogen cycle I want to focus on. I don't want to focus on the rest. And so let's really talk about the carbon cycle and how carbon moves around the biosphere. And so again, um, what I'd really want you to take from this overall diagram, we're going to kind of go through it piece by piece here in just a minute. Um, but what I would like you to be able to do is to tell me how carbon might move from source to source. Notice that there aren't arrows going everywhere. For example, um, we heterotrophs cannot simply take carbon dioxide out of the air. I guess I could try and you know, eat some of it or something like that, but I'm not going to be able to put it into my body and actually build biomass out of it. Uh, it'd be really cool if I could just sort of inhale a lot of air and, and build muscle. Um, but as, I, as far as I'm aware, that's not possible. So um, don't draw an arrow from, say, the air to us heterotrophs. So which way do the um, arrows go? And what would be the name of the conversion process? Um, and what form might the carbon broadly take would be things that I would want you to be able to tell me. So let's go kind of step by step. If we heterotrophs cannot grab carbon out of the air directly, then that's really what uh, amazingly autotrophs can do. This amazing process of photosynthesis or chemosynthesis on the ocean floor, uh, this process of taking carbon dioxide and with the help of some energy, uh, converting it into compounds that make up our bodies, uh, converting it into biomass, um, uh, molecules like carbohydrates, is, is really what this process is all about. 
And so that puts it into their bodies and makes it available to us heterotrophs for digestion. Um, either the herbivore that eats the plant directly gets access to those molecules, or perhaps the carnivore who eats the herbivore then has access to those molecules. And we have ways of, of digesting it for us uh, animals, that's usually internally, uh, to cut it up into little pieces, and then we can use our biosynthesis pathways to sort of build the molecules that we want. Um, I also want to emphasize that decomposers play a really important role. Um, also being heterotrophs, they release their enzymes to um, digest food externally, and then they take in the, the carbon that they want. Um, but I also just want to emphasize very briefly the, the crucial importance of decomposers in terms of uh, breaking down the, the molecules of dead organisms um, and, and taking uh, what they want for their own biomass and energy purposes. But even in that decomposition, they're going to take a, a lot of the molecules found in dead organisms and put them back into the soil and into the air for other organisms to use. Um, and how important that is, because otherwise, if organisms died, their, their molecules might be kind of locked inside their bodies and, and uh, ecosystems could easily run out of, of potential resources to support other living organisms. So the, the crucial role of decomposers. All organisms might take some of their biomass and burn it for energy. So I kind of talked about that in the energy flow video too. Here I just kind of want to talk about where the, the carbon actually goes. So you could take uh, the, the stored high energy electrons in carbohydrates and by burning it, we remember that at the end of the citric acid cycle, that, that uh, carbon carbohydrate actually turns into the carbon dioxide that we then exhale. So um, that would be one way to return it to the air. If we were to go to some other pathways, we see that perhaps the, the, the biomass carbon that makes us up could actually turn into fossil fuels if uh, organisms die and then get buried before decomposers actually have access to them. So they get kind of buried under deep sediment and then maybe hundreds of millions of years of heat and pressure can actually take uh, and do some chemistry and convert those molecules into hydrocarbons like oil, coal, and natural gas. So um, if we get access to those as modern society through drilling and hydrofracking and things like that, then we might be able to take those hydrocarbons and, and take the, the tremendous amounts of stored energy in those molecules. And by converting them to um, uh, chemicals like carbon dioxide, we release a lot of energy used to spin turbines uh, and make electricity. We would call that process combustion. So that releases a lot of carbon dioxide back to the biosphere as well. And we kind of see the overall cycle. So we've, we've kind of uh, been visited every place within this cycle. Again, I would say the broad summary I want you to appreciate is that matter does cycle. So just kind of a, a closing thought to really uh, think about what that means. That means that um, all of the molecules that have existed on this planet, all the carbon anyway, um, has been here since the beginning of time, since the beginning of the planet. Um, and so the molecules that currently make me up have been here in other forms and will continue to be here after I die and my uh, physical body gets decomposed and uh, uh, maybe uh, joins the body of a decomposer temporarily or a lot of my uh, carbon gets released as carbon dioxide that's later pulled in by plants. Um, that's just kind of maybe a neat thought to think of that, that the, the stuff that makes us up will always be here in some form um, on this planet.